So today we're going to talk about LAFC and we're specifically going to compare the 2019 and 2022 season because when you look at this season for LAFC, it really reminds you of the 2019 season when they won the Supporters Show and broke what was back then the points record in a regular season. And we'll also talk about not just whether or not if they're going to break the points total record, but also, can they reach 80 points? Because I think back in 2019, uh, right around this point, there was people talking about they could break the 80 points mark. And now, with how LAFC is at 57 points, there's people talking about they could potentially break the 80 points total again, especially the fact that they are actually now on the longest winning streak in their club history. So, we started off with March, and in March, LAFC, of course, got a 2-1 win against Sporting KC. They got a 4-1 win against the Portland Timbers. They did drew 2-2 against NYCFC, and then they won 2-1 against RSL, and they round off March with an impressive 5-0 victory against the San Jose Earthquakes, which puts them at 13 points. Now, in terms of the, the March that LAFC had this season, and technically February, because, you know, the season did start a little bit earlier, can... Uh, uh, a little early compared to what happened in 2019, but on the first game, LAFC were able to win 3-0 against the Rapids. Then they got a 1-1 draw against the Portland Timbers before winning 2-0 against Inter Miami, and then, of course, winning 3-1 against the Vancouver Whitecaps. So up to that point, they have 10 points, and uh, up to the end of the March, they, they were at 13 points. But like I said, you know, uh, they do play one last game compared to what they were in 2019 by the end of March. So let's take a look at April. And in April, uh, they follow up that 5 0 road win by winning 4 0 on the road against DC United. Then they won 2 0 against FC Cincinnati. They did lose 1 0 against LAFC. And up to that point, they were actually really unbeaten. And that there was people talk about can they potentially beat the un unbeaten streak to start the season, which unfortunately they weren't able to do so as they lost to the Whitecaps in that one. But they were able to bounce back by winning 4 1 against the Seattle Sounder. A matchup that little do we know would be the the conference final of that season. But that was also kind of the first of, of two heavyweight matchup between the Sounders. Because just a week later, they face against each other again. And they got a 1-1 draw up to that point. So up to that point, they're at 23 points. And up to that point, I think, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, 11. They play 11 match up to that point. Now compared to the 8th. Pro that LAFC had. They won 4-2 against Orlando City, and this is the April in the 2022 season. Uh, but they they did lose 2-1 in El Trafico against the Galaxy. They did win 3-1 against Sporting KC, won 2-1 against FC Cincinnati, and they were up to 19 points. Again, uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So only in eight games, they're able to reach the 19 point mark compared to how in, in April in the 11 game game stretch they of course reached 20 points or 23 points so if you do the math uh it seems like the pace that lafc was setting was much stronger than what they they were at at the end of april in the 2019 season if you look at points per game ratio now uh in may uh for lafc they did get a new new draw against the chicago fire and that was a surprise reserve because people thought they were going to destroy the fire but then they won three nothing on the road against columbus they also won two nothing against fc dallas before getting a 1-1 draw up to that point and then they of course won 4-2 against montreal to end the the month of may at 34 points look at lafc in may and it was a busy may in the 2022 season they of course won two nothing against minnesota uh drew two two against the philadelphia union won two nothing or actually not one they lost two nothing to the colorado rapids lost two one against austin fc and that was doing a stretch where you know people were kind of question well what's going on with lafc why are they on on this free game with this run turns out that was kind of a little bit of a bleep which you know of course all good teams tends to always ha have that throughout the season because they follow that by winning two nothing against the Columbus crew, and then they won 3-2 against the San Jose Earthquakes, and they are at 29 points up to that point, which is, again, a little bit less than they were uh, back in the 2019 season, but up to that point, they have played, um, uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 
13, 14, 15. So one one less game than they did in in the 2019 season. So they kind of f fell behind the pace uh, a little bit. And of course, a lot of that has to do when they went on a free game winless run during the month of May. Now we get into June, and in in June uh, in the 2019 season, there wasn't a lot a game in June. Uh, the LAFC, of course. They did win 3-2 against the Portland Timbers, and then they didn't play in league play for a very long time because the U.S. Open Cup was ha happening, and they play a couple of those games during that point. But they also so lost one nothing to the Colorado Rapids, so they only picked up three points during the month of June during those two games. And then in the month of June also this season, not a lot of games, but uh, it was a 1-1 draw between them against the Seattle Sounders. Then they won 2 nothing against the New York Red Bulls. And then, of course, they won 3-1 against FC Dallas. And up to that point, they are at 36 points. And I believe they're now even in terms of the amount uh, of points and uh, that they have got during the exact same amount of games. So they actually got one less point than they were in June. But you can see how there's a similarity in terms of the, the, the pace that they were setting in in this season compared to their 2019 season. Now, in July... Uh, we saw LAFC in the 2019 season won 5 1 against Sporting KC. They won 6 1 against the Vancouver Whitecaps. Then they won 3 1 against the Houston Dynamo. Uh, won 3 2 against LAFC. And then won 4 3 against Atlanta United before winning 2 0 uh, against. Or actually, I'm sorry. Uh, that uh, Before I talk about them winning 2 0 against New England. They were at 49 points up, up to that point. Or actually. Uh, they lost to, I forgot to mention, they lost to the Galaxy in in that, in part of a very impressive stretch that they are. But up to July, they're at 49 points. Now, looking at the July in the 2022 season, uh, they lost one nothing against the Vancouver Whitecaps, but they did win the El Traff going like this, The what they did in July of the 2019 season. Uh, they won the, uh, the El Traff goal in the 2022 season against the Galaxy 3-2. Then they, of course, won 2-1 against Nashville SC, won 2-0 against Sporting KC, and then won 2-1 against the Seattle Sounders. And they're at 48 points compared to where they were uh, in July 26, where they were at, at 49 points. So still one less point than they did in the 2019 season. But still, you know, when you look look at the, the stretch that, that both of these seasons are, still very s similar with the way that, that uh, doing both of those stretch, they, of course, lo lost once and pretty much won all their games in July. Then we go to August, and in August, this is where we kind of will, will stop kind of comparing each other because there's still games remain to, to play as we head into the end of August. But during the August stretch in the 2019 season, LAFC did win 2-0 against New England. They won 4-2 against the New York Red Bulls, won 2-0 against RSL, then won 4-0 against the San Jose Earthquakes before wrapping up uh, the end of August in another out traffic where they drew 3-3 free free to get their total to 62 points. Now, so far in August, they, of course, won 4-1 against RSL to make it 51 points, uh, won 5-0 against Charlotte to make it 54 points, and just recently, uh, they won 1-0 against DC United to, to get to themselves to 57 points. And if you want to go back to where they were also around this time in 2019 on August 17 when they beat RSL at, uh, at Rio Tinto and it got themselves their 58 points, again, very similar like the points total though it is very similar to 50 uh it's one more point than what we've seen in the the 2019 season compared to the 2022 season and again this is where we kind of had the discussion of can they of course get to 85 points both in this season and also in this season too well it turns out that uh after when we get to september this is when they kind of start to, to struggle and this is Part of the the season where I think this was also during the time when Carlos Vela wasn't really himself, or he was actually injured during this part because you know after they got a free free draw against the Galaxy, they did lose two nothing to Minnesota, got two 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 draw against Orlando City, got one one draw against the Philadelphia Union, and then got a one one draw against the T Toronto FC. So during that five five game stretch, they only were able to pick up up three. Three points doing that stretch and we're on a five game winless run and that's also kind of changed the narrative of the fact that not only they weren't going to get the 80 points mark but are they even going to get the, the points 
after this season. Well, for, fortunately, during that season, they were still able to do so as they stamp out of that five-game winless run with a 3-1 win against the Houston Dynamo. They did drew 1-1 against Minnesota, but on the final day of the season, they got a 3-1 win against the Colorado Rapids to reach 72 points. And again, that was back when 72 points was was the, the point record beating the New York Red Bulls the previous season. And of course, we know that now it's been best by the New England Revolution last season with 73 points total. Now, when you look at the upcoming games for LAFC, I mean, you know, they only need, need 16 points to tie the record and 17 to break the record. And with nine games left, you know, they need to just get more than two points uh, per game, which is definitely doable, consider, you know, they are on on a seven game uh, winning streak right now, and that it seems like it could potentially be eight, because when you look at the next game, they play against the San Jose Earthquakes this weekend, which that should be a win, because, you know, the Quakes are an absolute disaster right now, and even though they're playing at home in this game, LAFC have always done well against the Quakes, no matter if they're at home or away, well, except for last season. Last season was kind of a little bit bit different and also in the COVID shortened season but yeah when LAFC is on and the Quakes is not yeah I, I I think this should be an easy win for LAFC to get to 60 points there but then they got a tough one against Austin FC on the road and that's the one where I, I can think that they could lose this this game though I will say that Austin hasn't been been the best at home and they've been dropping points and that 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 you know there could be a possibility they can get a draw or even getting a, a win out of that match but yeah that's a that's a really tough tough game and that could be one that maybe LAFC could have their winning streak comes to an end now then they play against the Houston Dynamo it's a tricky game but I expect LAFC should be able to win then they play against RSL again another tricky key opponent but I expect them to get a win so up to that point I'll say they, they win here they probably would lose here so and then they win here which is 63 and then they win here which would be 66 then they go on the road against FC Dallas and again knowing how FC Dallas has been playing lately and if they can continue that good run that they had that could potentially be a loss because Dallas know how to beat the the best team uh, when they of course are playing at home so they will be stuck at 66 points up to that and then they got another challenging task to play against Minnesota United. And LAFC have never done well when they play against the Loons at Allianz Field. So I expect this could potentially be be a draw for, for them or even a loss. I'll say it's a, a draw because while they haven't done well at Allianz Field, at least recently they have been able to get points uh, away from that stadium. So that would be at 67. And then they get to play against the Houston Dynamo. I would say that's 7 70 and that should be a win then they have to play against the portland timbers and up to that that point you know the timbers they could be be in a pl playoff fight so they're going to be really re really playing at their best and also you got to remember up to this this point you wonder will steve turinello decide to rest some of his guys when the playoffs is about about to begin so maybe if he does decide to rest some of his guys in this ma match uh, maybe this could be a loss, but I'll say it's a draw, so they're going to be at 71 points there. And then on the final week, placing against Nashville SC, and again, that could be another game where they could play against a Nashville team that is looking to make it to the playoffs on decision day, but I expect they could get a win in that, so that, that will be the point, part where they get 74 points, which will be enough in ter terms of breaking the the record for the all times total now in terms of getting to 80 points yeah that could be tough like they need 23 points in the final nine games which what is that that's like uh almost 2.5 in terms of the points per per game ratio and that they can um you know there there is what what is it is it so they have nine nine games they at, at the best right now they can get to um they can get to 80, 84 points. That means that they cannot afford to... They, they can only afford like two draw or one one losses during the final you no know, nine games. And again, you know, another thing that, that I will heavily emphasize the fact that, you know, I think this team, you know, as much as they want to break the, the points total record and as much as they want to win the support ratio and also reach the 80 points mark, that's not very important for them. And you know that every LAFC fans and even Steve Chardello can admit... The fact that this team is thinking about play playoffs and what's going to happen when playoff time is. Because I think this season is really heavily weighed on, on what they do in the playoffs and whether or not if they win MLS Cup. Because if they win MLS Cup, it's a success. If they don't win MLS Cup, 
but if they still won the supporter shield or even breaks the points total record, it will still consider a failure because this is what they they built for ever since they came into the league. It's been MLS Cup or bust for them for the past couple of years, and this is probably the best opportunity since the 2019 season that they can, of, of course, do so. So that's why, you know, when you look at the, the, these games down the stretch, I won't be surprised that LAFC might rest some guys and maybe not take too much much risk down the the stretch but at the same time you know you could also argue that they want to get themselves on a winning form heading into the playoffs because you know that's the tricky thing when playoffs is about to begin you know you're you might be so ahead in the standings if you decide to rest some some uh, of your guys you know it can help them once playoff begin but will the, those guys perform at the same level that they they were one once the the playoffs of course of course be Began. And in some way, uh, you can already see there are some evidence that LAFC is doing that. You know, guys like Gareth Bale and, and Chiellini, they've been rested in, in these last couple of games. And they've been out because of the so-called low management that that they're doing. I mean, I can't believe I'm using the word low management. That's a word that usually the NBA use, not not in MLS. So I, I won't be surprised that they, they could start doing the same thing with some of their big name player. But... Again, there's one thing to be, be doing low low management and rest your guys from the, the start of the playoffs, but it's another you want to get them in in a, a a very competitive sharpness and get them them in a winning form heading into the playoffs where the, where once the playoffs begin, you know, we've seen so many times before the teams that win MLS Cup usually are the teams that, that get themselves in the best form heading into the playoffs. Like look at NYCFC last season, a team team that that were very hot down the stretch and they just run the table and basically went all the way to to MLS Cup and eventually winning the whole whole thing so yeah that's going to be something that LAFC will have to mind and also not to mention the supporter shield curse is still a, a thing so that you know even if LAFC does finish with the best record and the most points you know the supporter shield curse is a real thing and that there's that pressure in term terms of whether or not if they can of course win the whole thing but you know that being said you know this this video you know i just want to kind of talk about in terms of comparing both of the season and yeah let me know in the comments below do you think lafc will break the mls all-time points record in the regular season again and will they actually reach 80 points like what we 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 thought that they could do in the 2019 season but yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you guys see a like smash the subscribe button and yeah i of course will see you guys next time